is heavy. Get up! <laughs> I forgot to turn on my engine. evening. Um, this is where I slept last night. So no pliers obviously so I made a pair of pliers by squeezing between two stones. Uh, right, another another flight. Oh, it's so good to be up again. Oh this is just stunning. Absolutely stunning. Well done Kester for a brilliant course. What a great valley. I've got no that what's in there, so I'm going over here. Oh shit! Uh, 200 miles to go. <laughs> right, up here somewhere then. We should be able to get some. Icarus series. Stamp. Done. I'm on my way from misery to happiness today. Yeah. 
give you now just by leaning a bit. It's not brilliant this rig for weight shift steering. Not like these ones that have got the swinging arms. I have to put quite a lot of effort into it. One day, one day I'll get something amazing. Right, how long have I been going? Fuel check, I think so. It lapsed 30 minutes, that's all. Probably. Well, that's a good time to do a fuel check, so. So we're on six litres. Should be two hours. No, we'll see how we go. Half an hour, one hour. Talking boring, aren't I? Right, what do I know about this place? Um, I think we're between the moors now. I used to have a girlfriend down here, Fredden, between the moors a long time ago. Before 20 years of happily being married and having a child and all that fun stuff. Beautiful though. I mean, <laughs> down here, what we're talking about here. Going down, we're going to go up in a minute, hopefully. No, I've caught the edge of it. Brownfield there ahead of me should have a thermal coming off it, we'll see. It should be just this side of it because the wind's blowing this way. Uh, yep, the sun's bang on it. Going down, so I'm guessing I'm about to go up. Yep, there it is. Not a very big one, to be honest. Wow, big thermal. Nice. Maybe it came off that brown field there. Or oh, somewhere else, who knows? Not the off course, though. And now we're out of it. We dip it. worn down. Right, so these trees here were the uh, the first part of the nav that I was aiming at and the second part a hill over in the distance that you probably can't see. So I'll pick a new thing now, there's a row of hedges directly in line. We'll go for that.
what happened there, I was flying along quite happily, probably 10 minutes from my fuel station, engine just cut out. Oh, so I'm going to have a look at that in a minute. First off, I'm going to, um, I don't know if I showed it on camera, but that line that I put in, it's actually around a wrong line. So I'm going to just try and sort that out now. Um, Icarus X, what an incredible experience, just unbelievable. Uh, you know, I've done all sorts of crazy adventures in my life. I've gone, uh, ridden, a, ridden a motorbike around Australia and driven a van around 26 states in America. What else have I done? Um, ridden a motorbike around Europe, traveled on overland buses around Africa, um, traveled through on public transport through and ferries through a lot of Indonesia. Just been to some amazing places and done some amazing things, but nothing has quite matched this in terms of um, the, it being unknown and just being, um, what's going on here? Um, in terms of like, just not knowing what's gonna happen. And, and so, so yes, a lot of those places, it was very unknown. You, you didn't know what was gonna happen around the corner or what, <laughs> what, what um, you know, who you're gonna meet. And, and that had all of this, but it also had just this incredible kind of, actually what's going to happen when i when i land i suppose nearest i've got to that would be getting off a bus in indonesia and um, in a in a leper colony and not knowing what that was all going to be about but um but this was was really you know you get you get to a petrol station you don't know if you're going to be able to land you've looked on google earth the pictures might be five six years old and there might might it might have looked like a perfect landing field then but now it's just a, a whole load of um crops or power lines were everywhere that you couldn't spot on Google Earth or who knows what. So totally uh, incredible experience. I mean, got boring and I got very quite ill feeling at various points. Um, but uh, it was a challenge that I really loved. I'm going to talk a bit more about that in a while. Um, what I'm just, um, I've got here, obviously, my paramotor. So I'm just going to do a bit of work on it while talking to you. Obviously, there's the T-shirt, Icarus X. So I'm just... Um, this is the harness, quite heavy actually, the harness combined with the reserve. And this is my uh, fairy muff that I was talking about on the video a few times. Fantastic, can put my throttle hand in there, look here it is. Here's my throttle hand. Here's my throttle hand. And uh, I can just about get that inside there. Not with gloves on so easily, I have to squeeze it a little bit to get it inside. But it's fantastic so I can keep my hands warm inside there behind tucked behind um, my uh, tucked behind my reserve and um, keep lovely lovely warm hands which is fantastic so um, I'll probably do a video on, on kit at some other point because um, that's not really what this is about so as you just saw I had an engine out um, I don't know exactly what caused it but my suspicion to be honest is this thing here. hopefully you can see just here this um, this clamp is a little bit loose, so I'm going to replace that, and that's one of the things that I'm just uh, kind of going to work on now. So in terms of fuel burn, obviously the Bailey, it's a lot heavier, but when you're doing those long distances, that kind of balances out because you've got, you can carry a lot more fuel, still weigh the same as everybody else, but go further. Yeah, I was burning about three litres now with roughly 60 kilos on my back, so that's, that's a lot of weight. Um, that's the weight of a small person. And also, of course, doesn't help the fact that... Um, took the tips off my uh, propeller so I mentioned that a few times in in the in the Icarus X but you can see here just the damage that's been caused so I'm not into I'm, I'm, I'm thinking epoxy is going to be the way to fix that but I'm gonna have to do a bit of research and check out what's the best way to do that because obviously that's going to be revolving at some high speed so um, I will be fixing that quite soon um, so that meant that I was uh, getting through a bit more fuel perhaps than I normally would. So I normally can get, get by on about two and a half if I'm careful with the way I fly. But climbing was much more difficult and um, I probably wasn't keeping altitude quite so well. But that wasn't the reason I stopped. The reason I stopped, I think, as I say, was I think just fuel wasn't getting through up here, through into the carburetor. So I had a bit of a think about what might have um, caused the problem. 
and um, when I landed, <laughs> right, I'm just going to shut the door because I'm, I'm shooting a vid boat. <sighs> right, so just wondering what might have happened. Um, I was flying along, as you saw, the engine cut out fairly suddenly as if it had run out of fuel. So um, I, I ha when I landed, there was no fuel in any of the pipes coming up from the tank through the primer bulb there and the, and the, um, and the pump. And uh, so I initially I thought maybe carbicing I don't know too much about carbicing so I, I had a bit of a bit of a YouTube search and from what I can tell carbicing doesn't happen quite that suddenly it's more of a kind of clutters up your engine and makes it um, bog down a bit and just uh, struggle for a little while because it's not getting enough air so I don't think it was that and I think um, pr all I can find is that this is a bit loose here this this little clamp that um, that just goes into the fuel pump there seems to be a bit loose so I'm going to replace that um, while I'm talking. So I landed in a field, found one with no <laughs> no crops, no power lines, no uh, no animals and, um, and by the time I kind of sorted everything out, as you saw in the end of the video, that line that was, that I, I'd run the, t the new line in the other side of another line, it was very difficult in nil wind to work out exactly where it should go. So when I had a bit of wind in the field I could open up the whole the whole wing and just see see where it had gone and it was as you saw on the video the two bits were around each other so I corrected all that by the time I'd done all that I landed about 11 30 in the morning initially by the time I'd done all that and um, sorted my gear out I realized that, that in the order to, to get the three miles or whatever it was to the petrol station and then back again with this tank which comes off by the way look you can quick disconnect there and take this strap off um, in order to be able to do that I would have not had time to even even if I'd flown directly back to the to the HQ, there wasn't time, and the weather was awful, and I was feeling really sick for about three hours after landing. I still felt sick, so um, I basically reached the point where I figured enough was enough. And it turns out that of the twenty odd, twenty six maybe that that took part, I think there were only eight that made it all the way round. And of the um, of the adventure class of the adventure class, um, only one, Paul, Paul Mockford Paranu, links up in the corner, he was the only one who made it across to the end. Right, get all this petrol out. So what I decided to do was stuff my uh, kit, this this lot, plus everything else, I put the paramotor cover over, so when I made that, out of an old tent, sewed it together on a sewing machine, when I made it, I deliberately did it in a dark kind of green colour, so that if at any point I needed to hide my gear to get petrol or in this case to try and find my way back to HQ it wasn't so visible so I stuffed that all in a hedge and I thought well how am I going to get back I'm in the middle of nowhere and um, so what I did was I decided to go to something I haven't done for 20 years which is hitchhike <laughs> um, which uh, which was brilliant I can believe it I mean maybe the West Country is good for that sort of thing but I got about uh, I don't know um, I got out onto the road and started walking. I took my um, took my helmet with me just so it looked like uh, I was not just sort of a random person, but actually was doing a sport or something. Took that with me. And um, excuse me a second, I just got to put this in the bag. And anyway, the first um, first car that came past drove past me and then it stopped a little bit up the road so I ran up and it and the lady said uh, said have you broken down and I said mm, sort of and there I was with my helmet in my hand and I explained what I was doing and what had happened and um, she said well go on jump in and she said she likes to do a good deed every day so fantastic I thought um, I'd like to be the recipient of that good deed which I was and um, she took me to uh, Widdendown which is where a lot of the guys landed for fuel and that's where I was heading so I'd say about two miles away as the paramotor flies so various vehicles went past and uh, after about 10 minutes got picked up by a lovely couple who um, who knew nothing about paramotoring so I was telling them all about it but um, they were great they, um, he was some kind of eco gardener and um, she she has polytunnels and does sort of um, uh, she's a vegan and grows all sorts of vegan -y things and um, so it turned out we had similar tastes in a lot of things so we got on really well and uh, that was a great chat. So yeah, they dropped me at uh, just 
just on the road that goes to Shepton Mallet from the M5 and um, after about half an hour I was just about to get my phone out and call for, for someone to come pick me up and, uh, and then this delivery driver, a Romanian lovely bloke, um, stopped and he said where are you going? I said oh, Shepton Mallet, near Shepton Mallet. He said well I live in Shepton Mallet and uh, we got chatting chat and he took me right to right to the motorhome, to the van and um, right to the place where we started which was fantastic. He told me all about Romania, sounds like a fantastic country on the list. In fact, I'd quite like to, one day, if I ever get enough experience to get good enough, fly the length of the Danube, which I believe goes through Romania, um, all the way from the source in Germany right to Black Sea. Um, ten countries, I think. So no mean feat there. Got all the way back to HQ. Um, one thing that I did realise is that I didn't actually do... Oh, that's not good. Where's that leak coming from? Right, for now I'm just going to put this on and then I'll put a proper clip on it at some point. I haven't got one the right size at the moment, I have to buy one. Uh, so yeah, what I realised was I didn't do as much videoing as I'd liked. I didn't think about oh, what kind of video would this make and all that kind of stuff. I was just focused on the race really. I switched my cameras on and then just, just kind of got on with it. And so that that has not made for such a good video, which is partly why I'm doing this, this little kind of talk to camera bit now. In terms of my kit, I realised, especially after Paul Paranoob's uh, comment, that I had f far too big a bag. It wasn't actually that heavy. It was about 12 kilos. Holy Lord, Tim, when you're watching this. That's a big bag, mate. I'm, I'm sleeping with you tonight. There's going to be room in there for both yeah. of us. But because it had a sleeping bag and a tent in it and a roll mat, and they weren't all crushed down, it looked absolutely massive. But you could pick it up with one arm easily. Um, so, obviously... Uh, if I do it next year, I'll try and reduce that amount of kit. So the other thing that I'd really like to do is, um, basically up until now, I've been, paramotor hasn't been my main focus. I've, I've kind of been making do with old kit. So this, this Bailey 175 is um, about 12 years old, cost me about 700 quid. My wing is um, 13 years old, cost me about 800 quid. So for a grand and a half, I've done all that. I mean, obviously I've built my own motor and everything beforehand, and I've got a load of spare Bailey parts that um, fit on this and on my homemade one but um, hopefully it'll be time in the next year or so to just try and invest in some uh, in some decent gear and some more modern gear so all in all we got back to the uh, we got back to the camp at night and uh, had a great old beer and um, I missed out on the presentations and all that stuff which is a pity but um, I didn't really mind I'd had such a good time so I had to drive 70 miles in the motorhome uh, all the way um, back to get my gear out of the bush and then 70 miles back again cut my arm up quite a bit trying to drag it out of the bush it's quite heavy all this lot not this bit on its own but with everything else um, so um, ended up getting back to back to camp which uh, so we're, we're all having a bit of a beer and but then the news came in unfortunately which you probably heard if you've been watching some of the other Icarus X uh, videos about Jules Eaton um, now Jules, I met him in the in the morning on on uh, Friday, or sort of lunchtime ish on Friday, because I parked my motor home next to his man cave, which was brilliant. He showed me all around it, um, and it had got like a a bench down the side, which opened up and became a bed, and his paramotor was strapped in there, and he'd got a little cupboard with a with a kettle and a little hob on it on the top, and a place to make a cup of tea, and it seemed like just this little little um, trailer um, with a with a uh, kind of motorhome type um, vent on the top. It was just perfectly kitted out for going to motor uh, to paramotor events, and uh, it was absolutely fantastic. I was really impressed and thinking, this is really a nice setup for just being able to get your stuff and just go. And you can go to your local field in it, get your stuff out, fly, or go to a big event and sleep in it. Just fantastic. Um, he's an XRAF guy, but um, unfortunately on the Saturday we we lost him. Um, I don't I'm not going to speculate about what might have happened I don't I don't really know um, um, I, all I can say is the weather the thermal conditions just became horrendous and maybe that contributed to it I don't know but um, but he was a reasonably experienced pilot um, and uh, it's just it's just sad to to lose him he seemed like a lovely bloke and he actually appears on my first video I, I just you can't see his face but I just say hello to him um, when I'm getting ready to launch out of Minehead um, 
there's loads of pictures and information about him I guess on, on the uh, Icarus Trophy website so you can have a look at that if you want to know more um, I just feel terrible for his for his uh, for his wife and um, and his kid and um, you know you want to hope that it never happens to you it's always sad to lose a, lose anyone and um, losing somebody that you met that day is kind of difficult but like I say not as difficult for me as it is for those who knew him um, so on that note I'm gonna sign off and uh, just say Jules many 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 happy hours and days and nights of flying in in uh, wherever you are now <laughs>